I first started listening, the great thing about it was that it was, although it was so sophisticated, it was so accessible at the same time. Even a rock and roll kid like me could get a, you know, a little bit of a hook into it and learn from it. There are artists out there who aren't going to let anybody box them in and say, you can only do this, you can only do that, and they're going to continue to explore their artistic vision as long as they're living. And I think that the chick is definitely one of those artists. He completely devastated the landscape. It was like, you know, scorched earth. It was so musical, so powerful, so incredibly virtuosic. You're just having fun, you know what I mean? You're having fun and you're using that gift to make people happy. And I love that. That's what's so wonderful about working with, with Chick is that you go with the music, you go with the flow, you don't hold anything back, you're moving along with the rhythm. When you're around him, it's like being a moon when the sun hits you. <laughs> you, you glow. He's still curious, he's still a child. He still has a sense of wonder when he plays, a sense of awe. He was at the forefront of fusion, uh, one of the first guys to bring electric keyboards out of rock and roll and into jazz. I'm a definite fan of the electric band and, and that energy and that, that incredible craft again of chick in an electric more of a harder hitting environment the electric band came together last year uh, with a with a passion we gathered at the studio to rehearse and the first run through everyone came so incredibly over-the-top prepared that the first run-through just sent everybody through the wall, including us. And from there, from there it's been a real ride, uh, uh, putting the band back together again. The, the energy of the band is unbelievable. Everyone in the band, Dave Weckl, the, all the original members, John Patitucci, Frank Cambali, Eric Marienthal, uh, are all top form. The beginnings of this particular music for this album, for the electric band, began for me in 1968. When I first uh, discovered uh, L. Ron Hubbard as, uh, uh, as, as a great writer and a great humanitarian, uh, I, al uh, I also discovered him as a great artist through his writing. Came across this one book a couple of years ago that I had read earlier called To the Stars. And there's a part in the beginning of the book that describes the captain of the spaceship, Captain Jocelyn, um, playing the piano in this bar in a dive in what's called New Chicago. And I thought, I hear that music. This is what that uh, spaceship captain was playing. And I scored out a, a two minute piece of piano music. All the pieces you know, have a connection with the book. Some are connected to the main characters, some are places, um, and some are aspects of the, uh, you know, there are a lot of grooves on the record. Uh, the compositions are, are uh, amazing. Every tune is wonderful. We, we, um, recorded a, a, a tune that he wrote called uh, Long Passage. It's a very amazing composition. Chick put it on uh, last night after the session was over just to hear it in the studio. It's, it's incredible. I mean, it's just incredible. This new record, uh, To the Stars, is um, some of the most difficult music I've ever seen. <laughs> and uh, I remember the first time I heard Alan Corday, the piece, you know, it's seven pages long. You put it on, and the first time I heard it, I was utterly overwhelmed by it. <laughs> I had to have a little lie down. Alan Corday, probably every guitarist on the planet, will sit in disbelief because it's what Frank's doing is, is like Chick said, it's impossible to play that. And he, he did it. It's like a fandango. It has incredible rhythmic... Uh, feeling to it, but also it has some scary licks in it, you know. And I took this form from the flamenco 
and turned it into uh, a piece, this piece uh, called Alan Corday. And it's probably technically the most demanding piece on the recording. It's every rhythm in the book and some you've never seen before. And, uh, and, and the, it was so rich, the harmonic content. Beautiful melodies make you cry. Beautiful melodies. So it's, it's, it's some of his best, he feels and others have said it's probably his best writing yet. It's always an education, it's always a challenge, yet it's still just about, um, you know, honest communication between musicians and, and just, just playing without inhibition, without any rules, without any, you know, thoughts or, or preconceived notions about what it's supposed to be. His music is all-encompassing. It truly is a world music. He's an artist that has a firm grasp and understanding of the great history and legacy of, of American music and of jazz particularly. But he's encompassed all of these different elements of, of rock, flamenco, uh, funk, R&B. We're mixing electric instruments, some acoustic stuff. Um, there's a lot of great rhythmic stuff on it. There's some African stuff mixed in. There's some Afro-Cuban overtones. Dan has influences um, beyond what I could come up with, but uh, um, certainly, especially in this day and age, I think this band pushes the envelope. I have to say that, that this, this project is probably my best project and my, my most favorite project that, that, uh, of any that I've done so far. Uh, it brings together a whole lifetime of passion uh, for LRH's fiction work as well as uh, a lifetime of experience of, of, of different forms and styles of music, all of which seem to be, have landed into the uh, musical expression of, these, of the nine pieces on this record, together with, uh, with uh, uh, my favorite orchestra, the Electric Band. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm really pumped about this.